Hi folks, I'm Marissa, Chief Entomologist at Thanksgiving Point, and today I want to gush about the biodiversity of insects. Out of all the animals on the planet that we know about, almost 80% of them are insects. So that's about 900,000 species of bugs that we've named, and probably millions more to discover. And that's one of the most exciting things for me about being an entomologist, is that I can travel the world and learn about bugs my whole life and still have more to learn about. The reason we have so many species of insects is because they're very small, there are a lot of them, and they have short lifespans. So they're very quick to adapt to changes in the environment. Over the millennia, insects have been able to take advantage of a plethora of niches. So they've been able to learn how to hide, dig, climb, fly, swim, mimic, camouflage. They each have unique adaptations or specialized characteristics that help them thrive in their habitat. We call this divergent evolution, where all the animals from a common ancestor have evolved and accumulated differences, which results in species. So let's take a look at some of the specialized insects we have here at Butterfly Biosphere. We're gonna be looking at animals within the same order, but that have evolved special characteristics based on the habitats where they live. So first we're gonna talk about beetles. There's almost half a million species of beetles. They're super diverse. Um, and this is the order that we call Coleoptera. And what sets them apart from all the other insects is that of their four wings, the front pair of wings are sclerotized or hardened. So they look like they have a hard shell. So the first beetle we'll talk about is our blue death feigning beetle. You can find these in the southwestern United States, and they get their death feigning name from the fact that they feign death as a defense, because most animals that eat bugs don't like to eat dead bugs. So I'm gonna put this little buddy back so he can come back to life later, and we'll see if someone else will stay alive for us to learn about them. So. They live in a desert habitat. It's very hot and dry, and this blue color is actually part of a waxy coating that helps them to retain their moisture in that dry habitat. You can also see that they have nice long legs, good for walking around on land, and also for digging under logs for shelter. So these two little critters zipping around are called sunburst diving beetles. They also live in the southwestern United States, just like our blue death feigners. But as opposed to the long legs for walking around on land, they have their first four legs are very short and the hind legs are actually long and covered in lots of hairs that expand the surface area of those legs. And they can use them like paddles to propel themselves through water. So they are especially adapted for an aquatic environment. So that's a great example about how two very similar animals can and also have some very unique characteristics that adapt them to specific environments. Okay, the next group of bugs we're gonna talk about are mantids. This is the order Mantodia. And mantids are well known for being carnivores and stealth hunters. They utilize camouflage to hide from their prey, so it walks up to them unwittingly, and also from their predators, so nothing sees them to eat them. And I have two different species of mantis on this plant here. So our first one is a ghost mantis, and you can see that this is a species that's um, evolved to mimic leaves for its camouflage. And then our other mantis is right over here. It's called a twig mantis, which is a pretty fitting name. Um, and you can see that it actually, it's front pair of arms, which in mantids we think of them in like a praying position. This one's holding them out just to extend the illusion that this is a stick and, and nothing that's alive or an animal at all. So it's important to realize that evolution is not a conscious decision in these animals. What happened for them to split into such different shapes is that maybe for the ghost mantis species, the ones that were more green or looked more like leaves, they got eaten less often, they found a lot more food, so they were healthier, they were more likely to reproduce. And so as their generations continued on, more and more of their babies looked like leaves. And so that's how we get this speciation where they were very successful in a canopy type habitat habitat, whereas our little twig mantis over here, probably the individuals that looked more like sticks, were also having more success uh, in their particular habitat, and that's why they have diverged. If you like the video, like it, subscribe so you can see more videos about bugs in the future. If you have any questions about what we learned about today or any bugs in general, leave those in the comments below, or come visit us at the Butterfly Biosphere and ask us in person. Thanks, see you next time.